All right. Okay, here we go. All right, we're gonna sit up nice and straight in our seat. Begin to allow our bodies to just connect to the seat beneath us, our feet to be supported by the floor. Relax the shoulders. Relax the breath. Taking the breath moment by moment. Slowly start to just bring awareness to the sense of being in the present moment. Any thoughts that are maybe on your mind or anything on your to-do list. You can just maybe flick your wrist and take it off your mind. Anytime something comes up, just maybe flick your wrist. Also, if you like, you can close the eyes. If you do keep your eyes open, allow your gaze to be fixated in front of you. Let each part of your back body feel completely whole, vertebrae by vertebrae. Maybe even sit up a little bit taller in your seat, allowing the weight to completely be supported. And then maybe take a gaze down just for a moment and make sure that your feet are about hips width apart. And the way we know our hips width is we take our two fists, press them together, and hug the inner arches of our knees around our fists. And if you look down, you'll see almost like a capital H. You can drop the hands down by the sides. And for the next five breath cycles, just start to connect. Breathing in and breathing out, taking the temperature of your body, the temperature of your breath and your feelings. Together, we're going to collectively breathe together. Let's exhale all the stale air out of our body. Navel touches the spine. And the next inhale, breathe in. Allow the breath to flow deep. And then exhale, ha. Just kind of let it go. Inhale, breathe in. And exhale, ha. And as you do your exhale, let the shoulder blades maybe fall a little bit deeper down to the elbows. And from the elbows, the weight falls down into the wrists and to the fingertips. And take about three more breaths on your own, intentional breaths. where you are completely aware of the inhale and exhale cycle. We're gonna drop our chin to our chest on the next exhale. So bring your chin to your chest, but continue to maintain a good structure in your back body. Slowly rotate your right ear to your right shoulder. And then exhale, drop the chin back down into the chest and bring your left ear to your left shoulder. Chin back down to the chest. Right ear, right shoulder. Allow the breath to match the movement. And just rotate 
back and forth for about four times on each side, breath by breath. Now you can go as fast or as slow as you like. And then come back to center, allowing the eyes that you gaze to be in front of you. Take our hands and start to lift them up, reaching them up high overhead, rolling the shoulders away from the ears. Look up if you can, and maybe take the chin up towards the ceiling. And if you like, you can back bend slightly, just pivoting the shoulders back a little bit. Gaze is up, mountain pose, seated mountain pose. And just like when we're standing, we want to feel the full integrity of the pose. So from your feet, make sure that there's completely active all the way up to the fingertips. And we're going to take two more breaths in here. One more breath. And then on the exhale, allow the breath to match to the movement, releasing the hands down to the count of four. Three, two, one. We're going to go back up three more times. So inhale, arms lift up. Reaching up, roll the shoulders away from the ears, mountain pose. One breath, one movement, lift up through the pelvic whole body and bring the hands back down by the side. Four, three, two, one. Back up we go, two more times. One breath, one movement, coming up. And then on the exhale, slow down the exhale so that you match a four count. Three two, one, and then arms rise back up. Last one, make it count, really complete, be completely one with your breath and your body. Hands come down by the side, and then shake it out, and kind of twisting to the left and to the right. Just to kind of start to open up the vertebrae, open up the back, the lower back especially. Okay, great. Beautiful. We're going to bring both hands out in front of us. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Beautiful. Take the right hand. Wiggle the right fingertips. Take the left hand. And we're going to do a little bit of hand yoga right from the door. So take the left fingertips and just press on the right fingertips and just gently bring the fingertips back. Now don't go far. Anywhere you are in space is fine. I don't know if you can see my hand completely. It's a little far away, but you don't have to go very far. You only go to the place that you start to feel the sensation, like you know you're stretching your hands. If you need to take a break, and everybody, let's just take a break together. Bring your elbows to your sides. Keep the connection. And then on the next, uh, next breath in, take the hand, press it back out. Fingertips, pull back on the fingertips. And then begin to do your rotation, starting on your pinky, then moving to your index finger, I mean your ring finger, your middle finger, your index finger, and then your thumb. And then we want to push back on the hand, and then exhale, and start to just rotate the hands down. Beautiful. Now, before we go on to the left side, we're gonna go through a flow. So arms rise into mountain pose. Exhale, we're gonna forward fold, bringing our belly down towards our thighs, dropping our hands down in front of the knees, drop the chin into the chest. And you know that your chin is into the chest when the nape of your neck is loose. So you should not be holding on to any tension. Your shoulders should be loose. Your body should be completely relaxed on top of the thigh. On the next inhale, I want you to press into your feet. And as you press into your feet, squeeze your core, come up into a half lift flat back. Hands come behind you. The top of the head is in front of you. And then on the next exhale, come back down, gently and controlled, bring the belly to the thighs. Come back up, pressing through the feet, through the body, arms rise, reach up. And every time you do this in mountain pose, you're going to feel like you can go back a little bit more. And then bring the hands down by the side in a controlled way. So we don't want to just drop the hands. We want to make sure that we are steady and controlled. All right, great. 
Both hands come out in front of us, roll the shoulders away from the ear, sit up a little bit taller. Great. Wiggle the left fingertips and sky flip the left palm. Okay. Right hand comes underneath and it pops. And then you can pull back on those fingertips, finding that sweet spot. And before we start, I want you guys to get into the habit of taking breaks when you need it. So even though you may not need a break now, bring the shoulders by the sides and keep the connection. And this is what we do when we feel fatigued in our arms. And then we can come back out and see the pose is still here for us. Begin your breath work by taking each finger, starting with the pinky and doing your rotations. Allow your breath to be fluid. The biggest issue here with hand yoga is that people hold the breath. If you breathe, you will find less tension. So take it finger by finger. All the way to the thumb. And then do your last fingertips pushing back. And then you rotate the hand down. Arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. We're gonna go through a flow. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Nice, strong tummies. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Now I want you to keep your hands up this time in mountain pose. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms up towards the ceiling. Good. Slowly we're going to lean to the right and then we're going to pivot back so that our left elbow comes behind us. And then we take our gaze and we're looking up. So we should be seeing the inside of our arm as we're taking our gaze up towards the ceiling. Come back to center. And then we're going to lean over towards our left. Again, pivoting back on the elbow. This time the right pivots back, the shoulder pivots back, and we're looking up. Come back to center. Arms come down slowly. Four, three, two, one. This time behind you, what I want you to do is take your hands and just press the arms back, straighten them out. If it's too much for you to do that, just grip onto your, um, your sacrum or grip onto your clothing. If it's in your practice to kind of stretch out those arms, go for it and then dip your head up. We'll dip the back of your head back and the chin up. Pinching the shoulder blades together like you're holding a penny back there. And then on the next exhale, let go. But just really let go like your whole hands just kind of like, whew. Like I just gravity just kind of takes over. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Good job. Breathe in and out and just take a moment to feel the body. Notice how you're starting to open up. And we're going to take our um, feet. We're going to press our feet together. Make one long leg. Arms reach up overhead. Bring the hands to heart center. Press more into your feet. Squeeze the belly. Don't worry so much about the knees touching. Think more about your feet pressing into the floor. And then you're going to take your left elbow, and I want you to bring that left elbow down the center of the room. And then twist back to center. Wiggle the right elbow, and bring the right elbow back to the center of the room. Inhale back to center. Left elbow, center of the room. Gaze is over to the right side, and stay here just for a moment. On the next Breath in, sit up a little bit taller in your pelvic bowl, and on the exhale, just drop your elbow wherever you are. So it should come either to your right thigh, to your left thigh, but either way, just place that elbow on your thigh, wherever you are. Right elbow is towards the sky, left elbow is planted on the thighs, and you're looking over to the right side. We're going to take about four breaths here and just feel the way the breath helps to massage the spine. It's gentle, and it's a beautiful way to kind of loosen up the back body. Two more breaths. One more breath. Press again your feet into the ground and then start to pivot up using the core muscles to come back to center. You're still looking over towards the right. And then we're going to pivot 
Hands to heart center, coming down to the center, looking back in front of us. And just pause here for a moment. We're gonna wiggle our right elbow. We're gonna bring the right elbow down to center. Left elbow comes behind us and we're facing the left side. And right here, just stay where you are. And then gently drop down that right elbow, bringing it towards your thigh, wherever it goes is fine. So whether it's on the left side or the right, and then take the gaze up, looking up. Again, take about five breaths. And this is just a gentle way to massage the spine with the breath rather than cracking or twisting, over twisting the body. We're just using the breath. Continue to keep the gaze looking up towards the left ceiling. I'm going to come back up, still looking towards the left, and then pivot the body back towards the center. Again, take a moment, take a breath. We're going to take the fingertips while our hands are in our center. We're going to start to tilt them back towards our heart. Drop the shoulders, relax the shoulders so that they're not crunched up on the ears. And then on the next exhale, we're going to Shift the fingertips so that the, uh, the, the hands that are pressed together are now facing towards our thighs. And then come back up, fingertips facing the heart. And allow your breath to take over, one breath, one movement, four times in all. And however you find your rhythm is fine when it comes to your breath. So some people may be faster, some people may be slower. Some things might be different. Maybe you want to do two breaths in this cycle. Come back to center, bring the hands up overhead. Look up, gaze up, and lift up out of the pelvic bowl. Squeeze the core, seated thunderbolts. It's beautiful. And then drop the hands by the side. We're going to come back up, bring the hands back up, palms pressed together, seated thunderbolt, second time. Squeeze the core, lift up a little bit more so that the rib cage lifts up towards the heart. And now take the gaze up just a little bit more, but really press the palms together. If you like, you can even cross the thumbs behind you so that you can feel this heat coming from your hands. And the more you press into your hands, the more you feel the strength in your arms and in your belly body. And somehow it just works out. Breathe in, breathe out, and then exhale. On the next time, we want to bring the hands down, but to the count of four, two, one. Great, and just shake that out. All right, let's go through a flow. Arms rise. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms reach up overhead. Hands come back down by the side. Beautiful. This time, before we were together, this time we're gonna bring our legs apart. Because we started to stretch different areas of the leg body, so we wanted to be able to now stretch the inner thigh muscles. All right. So arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead, exhale, hands come right on top of the knees, right, right where the knees and the thighs are. All right, slowly we're going to start to push the body forward, arch the back body, and then pull it back up. We're going to come back forward, heart leads the way, chin tucks into the chest on the way back up, but we're arching that, uh, we're dome shaping the back. So we're doing this fluid kind of movement and breathe with it. Do two more of those. Again, seeking your own rhythm, seeking your own pace. Last one. We're going to stay here just for a moment. Slowly. Take your um, right elbow and just wiggle it. I want you to be on your right side, okay? You're going to take your left elbow and you're going to 
relax it on your left thigh. So right now, if you took your hand, your left hand off, you would be relaxing your elbow and your whole body would be leaning to the left. You're gonna take your right shoulder and I want you to just tilt it towards the front and then pull it back. It's almost like you're doing a dance, like the hokey pokey, okay? So we put our shoulder in the middle and then we pull our shoulder back. So that motion is what I want you to keep. As we come all the way down, I want you to bring your shoulder all the way down and use your right hand to press your hand into the side of your right leg. And now keep that shoulder pointed towards the ground. Now your left elbow doesn't move, it's still um, just sitting there and resting on your left thigh. Now we're gonna come back up, bring up that shoulder, rolling it back. And just feel the difference from our right side of the body to the left. So you know it's been doing some kind of work, right? That little bit of movement did something for you. So now we're gonna take our right, um, our right elbow and I want you to just rest it on your right thigh. Again, like you're leaning towards your right, you're gonna take your left arm and you can wiggle your left elbow just so you can find it in space. And then bring your left shoulder back and do that hokey pokey again. Bring the shoulder down the middle and then pull it back. This way you get that motion. You're going in the right direction. All right, and then as we um, take the next um, downward motion with this, we're going to press out our left leg the resistance from our thigh is going to push back into our left hand. And this is how we're going to bring our shoulder down the middle. Now a lot of dancers do this pose. I think it's a really important pose. But sometimes if we don't get our left and our right, right, it doesn't have the same effect. So really take your time. And then come back up. All right, great. We're going to do it one more time, but this time it's going to be one breath, one movement. So right hand, um, wiggle the right elbow, bring the left hand down to the thigh, and then just going right forward, dropping the right shoulder right down the middle. Breathe in and out, and then come back up. Then we're going to drop the right arm onto the right thigh, and then we're just going to come straight down with the left shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out, come back up to center. All right, awesome. And then what we can do is go one more step further. All right, so we're gonna take our arms, reach them up overhead, and bring the hands into the goddess pose. Squeeze the core, lift up out of the pelvic bowl. Pause for a moment and just breathe. Take your right fingertips, I want you to wiggle them. And bring your right hand, allow it to slide down the inside of your right leg so that your elbow is resting on the inside of your right thigh. Right fingertips are wrapped around the right ankle. The left hand is lifted up towards the ceiling. A long line of energy. And if your hand is like all the way behind you, I think you should maybe bend the elbow so that that is a little bit straighter. You don't want to overextend, all right? Um, if you can bring it straight up, imagine that the balloon is right above you. What does helium do? It brings the, the balloon right above you, right? It doesn't go behind you. We're thinking that it's just a beautiful day and it's going up towards the sky. Breathe in and breathe out. Now bring that left hand down. Allow it to slide down the inside of the left leg. Bring the elbow to the inside of the left leg for that resistance. Wrap the left fingertips around the left ankles and then bring the right hand up. Take the gaze towards the ceiling. Breathing again. Keep making sure that that imaginary balloon is right above you. You're holding on to it. It's not behind you. It's not in front of you. You can always bend that elbow if you need to. Bring both hands down. Now they're both on the ankles. And if you want to stay just like this, you can just dropping the chin to the chest and keeping yourself up if you don't feel comfortable. But if it's in your practice and you feel comfortable and only if you feel comfortable, you can bring your hands down to the ground, drop your chin to the chest and let your head hang heavy. Now, if you're not comfortable and the modification is to just stay here, continue to use the resistance. 
Continue to press your elbows into your thighs and your thighs into your elbows. So that is your modification. Otherwise, it's hanging heavy. And Ian, you'll know if you're hanging heavy if you can shake your head yes or no. And it's just completely loose. One more breath. We don't like to stay down too long because the blood rushes down, so we have to take our time. Bring your fingertips back around your ankles if they're not there already. And then slowly start to walk. Thumbing is like a Thai massage, um, thumbing and palm pressing all the way up the shins, the inside of the shin, the calves, until you get to your knees, your thighs, walking those thumbs all the way up until finally your belly and then your head all come back up. And we take our time doing it, okay? We're gonna go through a quick flow, reach up to mountain pose, exhale, forward fold, inhale, half lift, flat back, exhale, forward fold, inhale, arms rise. And bring the hands to your chair. Holding on to your chair like you're going for a ride. Let's see what time it is. Okay. And we're holding on to the chair like we're going for a ride. So we're going to take our right foot, wiggle the right toes, take the right heel and bring it down in front of us. So our leg, just so you can see me, is completely stretched out. Now the knee is a little bit soft, but my toes are waving hello to me. Okay, so if you wave your toes, they're not pointing to the wall, they're waving hello, okay? And what you're going to do, I guess I'll stay like this, this might help, all right? Our left foot is completely solid, knee is stacked on top of the ankle, all right? Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly start to just lean forward, and all you're doing is leaning, just enough so that you feel your hamstring stretch. That's it, that's all you want to do. Still holding on to the chair, belly starts to press forward. So instead of you hunching over to do this, I want you to just move the belly forward. And this is really important for a lot of our forward folds. Move, yep, there you go. Moving that belly forward and pause. And you should just feel this long line of energy and your hamstrings start to open up and loosen up. Take three breaths. No need to rush or force. And think about each breath in your mind's eye, just loosening up this part of your body. And when I say loosening it up, this will help the whole body. And then come back up. Bring both your right foot and your left foot to me. We're back in our um, starting pose. Our base pose is like what I like to call it. And then we're going to come on to the other side. All right, so take the left foot, wiggle the left foot, and bring the left foot down. Heel says hello, still holding on to my chair. I'll sit up a little bit taller. I soften the knee just a little bit. I don't know if you can see my knee is a little soft. It's not completely rigid. All right, so I'm going to sit up a little bit taller, and then I'm going to start to lean forward. Belly starts to press towards the thigh. Right foot is stable. That's where a lot of our weight goes to as well. Remember, our body is two parts. So let the weight distribute, be distributed evenly and just start to bring the belly forward. Three breaths. One, two, three. All right, come back up. Beautiful. Bring both feet to me. Back to base we go. All right. Take the right foot. Once again, bring it out in front of you. Sure that you can see me. Now we're going to take the left foot and cross it on top. Again, knees are soft. All right. Holding on to our seat to start. We'll start to lean forward. Just pressing that belly forward. Just like we did before, we're not hunching over, we're pressing the belly forward. Well, if you wanna let go so that your hands are loose, you can, but it's up to you. And then gently you start to just lean forward until you find your place of stretch. You only wanna to go to your boundary, don't go beyond it. Then you can drop your chin into your chest and start to let the body fall over. 
When I say fall over, it's just completely heavy. Here, the back is kind of hunched up, but the belly is already positioned right where it needs to be for you to receive that stretch in your hamstrings. And breath by breath, you start to lean more into the pose. You are turning towards the pose, so to speak. And take two more breaths, but make them deep. They're not two seconds, they're two, two breath cycles. And then gently come back up, squeeze in the core, and rise back. Roll the shoulders away from the ears, bring the feet back to base, hips width apart. Pause for a moment, take a breath. Left foot wiggles, bring the left foot onto the ground. Take the right foot, cross it on top. And we're gonna do the same thing like we did on the other side. Sl slowly start to Lift up through the body and um, bring the belly towards the thighs. And then when you finally find that sweet spot, let your body just start to hang heavy. Let the weight of gravity just be there. If you want to hold on to your seat, you can, but you don't have to. And just so you know, everybody is different and each side of the body is different. So you can't compare this um, pose to anybody else or even to the other side your left or your right. So just go for what you feel like right now in the present. Slowly come back up, rise and back up. Hands come back on to the ground. Arms rise, reach up, lift up. Uh, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. We're going to do it two more times, so really lift through it. Exhale, come down, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Mountain pose. Last one, make it your own. I'm here, I'm demoing if you need me, but see if you can just go through the motion. Your body has the memory, the muscle memory is there. Last one, make sure you reach up for the ceiling. And then hands come down by the sides. Beautiful, and shake it out. All right, guys, so let's come to standing. Beautiful, we have some good time. So come standing behind your chair, take your time. We're gonna start out anyway by just feeling our bodies right behind our chair, softening the knees, standing in our mountain pose. All right, we've been doing this mountain pose from a seated position, now we wanna to start to come up. And you can even feel um, a little bit of the distribution of your weight. If you just will rock back and forth, like to the left and to the right, a few times, that is very helpful. Just really helpful to gauge your temperature of how your balance is today. Again, practice changes day by day. You can hold on to the chair if you like. And begin by just taking a few breaths in and out. And as you take these breaths in, I want you to feel the full length of the breath connect to the full length of the body all the way to the toes. You wanna bring your hands overhead or you wanna bring one hand overhead for your mountain pose, you can do that. If your hands are overhead, your fingertips are facing one another, so your hands are parallel. All right, if you're holding on to the chair, one hand is facing parallel to the wall behind you or to the side of you, I mean to the side of you. All right, hands come back down. We've effectively transitioned up. We're gonna begin by shifting the weight over to our right, um, to our left foot. And then our right foot is just gonna lift up off the ground and hover. We're gonna come back down, right foot comes back down to the mat. Left foot now comes off the ground and just hovers. Beautiful. So we're gonna start to take the weight back and we're gonna start to shift. Remember how we were hovering, you feel where your balance is, you feel like where you can go. Find a space and come and see your first down, modified downward dog. 
you want to bring your forehead onto the top of your chair, you can. Now, if your chair doesn't have this kind of top base, you don't have to do that. And if it's not for you, you don't have to do that either. You can just hold on with your fingertips. And just start to pedal the feet out, softening the knees left and right. And maybe even twisting the hips just a little bit, not the knees, but the hips, to kind of open up the hip body. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly we're going to start to come up, lifting up the upper body. We're going to take our right foot and we're going to bring our right foot forward. And our left foot is going to be back behind us. And you're going to take your left foot and you're going to twist. And just so you can see me, you're going to twist that left foot so that it's at about a 45 degree angle. Okay? Right foot is going to be right in line with the chair in front of you. All right, toes might even be able to touch the chair. And that's how in line you are. The other thing is, and I like to mention this because I see this all the time, if you're standing in a line like this, this is very hard to balance on. You give yourself a stance where you have a little bit of space, maybe even like three to six inches so that you feel like you're um, more stable. All right, so if you feel a little unbalanced, give your feet a little bit more space. You're going to sit down a little bit lower, making sure that your right knee is stacked right on top of your right ankle. You don't want to be running forward or back. And I always say this for every class, you want to make sure that this is in line. You should be able to see your toes. And now we're going to take our right hip, we're going to bump it back, left hip is forward, and you can bring your right hand up toward the sky. Beautiful. If it's in your practice, you can bring up both hands and come into a full warrior. Breathe in and breathe out. Three breath cycles here. And as you're here, let your warrior be completely active. All the way from the feet to the soles of the feet. The thighs. Imagine that there's maybe a block in between your legs. If you want to extend your feet out or you want to bring them in, that's up to you. We're going to take our right hand now. We're going to bring our right hand in front of us and bring our left hand behind us. Bring your right hand to the chair if you want to modify. Otherwise, keep your right hand out in front of you and continue to look over your right fingertips. Warrior two. If your hand is in a modified position for warrior two and is holding on to the chair, make sure you're looking over your right shoulder. Again, you can go in a little bit more for your stance, your choice, or you can come in closer. Your body's not glued to the mat. Slowly start to lean your right shoulder down. Your left hand is staying right where it is, but then you're going to start to lean back like your shoulder is tracing a line on top of the wall. The left hand comes to your thigh on your left side. If you're in reverse without modification, bring up that hand on the right side, and now you should be able to look up and gaze up to your hand. If your shoulder, if you're in modification and you're holding on to the chair, you should be just looking up to the ceiling and feeling a nice long stretch on your right arm. Remember, that's modified. We're going to come back to center, come back into warrior two. Then we're going to pivot around like we're bringing our left hand around. We're back into warrior one. Bring our hands down and come back into downward facing dog. And just kind of shake it out a little bit and work it out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we're going to take our left foot and bring it forward. All right, right foot is going to be behind us. Now I'll come to this side just so you can see me. So left foot's there, right foot is in the back. All right. We want to clean this up. So again, just like we did on the other side, apply all those principles onto your left. Coming in, um, preparing the body for a warrior one. So bump back on that left hip, bring the right hip forward so you can square your body with the chair. Allow your toes on the right side to be out to about a 45 degree angle. Make sure you got your stance, squeeze your muscles in your legs. Squeeze the body, lift up out of the pelvic bowl. When you're ready, bring up the left hand. Nice, strong warrior. You can sit a little bit lower if you like. 
Right hand is still on the chair, but if you want to do the full warrior, you can. Your choice. It's up to you and your level. Three breaths. You're going to bring your left hand in front of you. If you're modifying, bring your left hand to the chair. Right hand behind you, warrior two, looking over the left fingertips. I'm going to do the modified position. I'm looking over my left shoulder. So you should be looking over your left shoulder. Beautiful. Slowly start to lean that shoulder down towards the chair. And then come back, drop the right hand down to the right thigh, stretching out the left arm so that it's straight. Just the fingertips still relax or reside on top of the chair. If you're doing the unmodified version of Reverse Warrior, your hand on the left side is up and you're taking that gaze up, but this is not modified. If you're using the chair, you should be keeping your fingertips on top of the chair. Slowly come back into warrior, um, warrior two. Pivot the body, come back into warrior one. Hands come back onto the chair and come back. And beautiful. All right, we're going to come back. Come back up to standing behind our chairs. Come back into our mountain pose. Breathe in and out. Again, we're going to shift our weight. We're going to do the last pose of standing, which is tree pose, which is my favorite, guys. So you want to make sure you're standing in that mountain pose to start. And then you're just going to shift your weight back and forth once again. This time I want you to shift all your weight onto the right side, softening the right knee. Okay, so my knee's a little soft, it's a little bent. And you can take your left foot and just tap it on the ground and bring the heel up. So lift the heel up so that you are able to um, place the heel right above your right ankle. Toes are still pressed on the ground and this is the first part of tree. You can hold on to the chair. You can lift up on your right arm and find a place that's comfortable. Imagine like a nice strong tree out in the forest. You're rooted down through your feet, which is in the ground. The rest of your stump is up and then your arms are like your branches. So place your branches anywhere. But if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, you can go up to the next step, which is bringing your foot to the inside of your right foreleg, not on the knee, not on the ankle, not on any joints, this is on the inside. Again, the chair is here for your support. Your branch can go anywhere you like. The last part of this modified pose is placing the foot on the inside of the inner thigh. Again, you can find your way through any one of these modifications and use the chair or a wall near you. Use the breath and imagine the breath is part of what keeps you grounded. And when you become wobbly, imagine that that's just a little bit of wind. So you can be a little bit flexible in this, allowing your body to completely be in balance by being loose, being flexible, being okay with being unbalanced just a little bit, not to where you fall, but just enough to where you're able to bend and not break. Bring that left foot back down to the ground. Shake out the right, shake out the left. Again, come back into mountain pose. We're in a strong mountain. We're gonna shift our weight now over towards the left side. The left foot now gathers all the weight and find a home for your right foot. You know the modification options. Toe on the ground, heel above the ankle, the foreleg, or the thigh. Place your branches where you feel most comfortable and challenge yourself as you feel to do so. I see some of you guys are doing it without even using the chair, that's great. And for those who are using the chair, great. I think it's beautiful. 
you're challenging yourself. Everybody is challenging themselves. Allowing yourself to learn how to balance through your imbalance. Learning how to bend instead of break. Beautiful. Bring your right foot back down to the ground and shake out your left and your right foot. One more time for mountain pose. Just stand here. Take about three breaths, three breath cycles. Completely full. And then we're going to come back to sitting in our chair. Take your time as you come back to the seated position. This is a beautiful opportunity to just breathe. We're going to do one more pose before we close class and do Savasana. Now that we've really stretched out our legs and our full body, we should be able to come into a seated half pigeon, okay? If for whatever reason you cannot do the seated half pigeon, just give me a moment. I'm going to walk through the seated half pigeon and I'll give you a modification, okay? Let's begin by taking our fingertips, wrapping them around our right leg, then we're going to bring that right knee up towards our right armpit. And if and when you're ready, if you're doing the half pigeon with me, come to bringing your right foot right on top of the right thigh. Just start to kind of rock back and forth. And when you feel super comfortable, you can start to just lean your body forward, bringing the belly first. And if you want to just stay just like this, you can. If you find that your knee, and I notice this sometimes, it, you're not as flexible, your knee is all the way up by the chest, you can just kind of wrap your hands around your knee, and that's fine too, okay? And if you can, and you're super more flexible, or you do yoga more often, you might be able to come down to your forearms or bring your hands and completely allow them to hang over, chin to the chest. Now the modification for those who are not comfortable with doing seated half pigeon is to come back into the extended leg forward fold. Okay, so you're going to extend your right foot out and then cross your left foot on top and just lean forward once again and allow the body to hang heavy. And this will be your version of the hamstring stretch. Okay. So that's the modification. I'm going to come back into the half pigeon. Take about two more breath cycles. Slowly come back up. Taking your time, wrapping your fingertips around the knee, bringing the knee back up towards the armpit and then gently laying it back down, the foot back down on the ground. And if you are in um, the modified position, you can just unwind the feet and bring your feet back into base position, hips width apart. Awesome. Arms are gonna reach up and then we're gonna swoop around and we're gonna do the other side, the left side. We'll bring the left, um, up, left knee up towards the left armpit. And then we're gonna bring our left um, foot or ankle and bring it right to the right thigh. Again, wherever you are is fine. If your knee is all the way up, you can just kind of hug around it. And just kind of roll back and forth, just opening up the thigh body. If you want to modify, you can. Um, or if you want to go deeper into the pose, you're welcome to do that. As you start to lean the body forward, the belly and the chest, you can feel your temperature and feel what you're able to do. Kind of give yourself a gauge as to how flexible you are on this side. Again, if you're modifying, I'll do the modification for those who are modifying. Bring the left foot down, bring the right on top of it, and bring the upper body forward. Extend the leg, forward fold. Okay? Those are your options. Take two more breath cycles.
one more. Slowly bring the body back up, lifting the belly, the chest, and then the head. Unwind the legs. If you're in your extended leg, forward fold. If you're in half pigeon, seated half pigeon, bring the left knee up towards the armpit and gently bring the left foot back down to the ground. Beautiful. We're gonna do a final flow. I know I said that earlier, but I think this calls for a flow and then we'll come into Savasana. Last one, arms rise. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back, strong, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise, reach up, lift up overhead. Bring the hands down through the heart center. Rest the hands somewhere on the thigh body. If you want to sky flip the hands, you can do that. And even if you want to bring the hands by the side, you can do that. Just find a place for them. Close the eyes. And congratulate yourself on a job well done. You didn't have to come to yoga today, but you did. You took it breath by breath, moment by moment. Relax the feet, relax the legs. Maybe even the knees kind of fall apart from one another. Relax the thighs, the belly, the back. Let your body, your upper body completely melt into the seat beneath you, completely supported by the floor that's underneath the seat legs. Relax the shoulders, the arms, the hands. The tongue is at the top of the mouth. Let it relax by relaxing the jaw and dropping it away. Relax your senses, your eyes, your mind. And maybe even smile for all the goodness that you did for yourself today, and honoring your body, respecting yourself, and working towards your health in ways that nobody could imagine. You've done very well. Breathe in and breathe out with this beautiful, vibrant energy. Continue to be in Savasana until I ring the singing bowl. When you're ready, you can open your eyes, wiggle your fingertips, wiggle your hands. If you like, you can bring your hands to the heart center so we can close class together. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you so much and namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week.